that's such a sad um, um, So, we also have something coming up Sunday night, and it's not necessarily directly related to the school, but how many of you guys here have heard of Oxygen Student Ministries going on? Alright, so we're going to have a video here about that, and then Matt Chairman is going to come up and tell us a little bit more about that before we begin chat with today. Um, yeah, that's Oxygen City Ministries. Uh, it's at Linden Word Church. It's at the old building at Castle Road. So it's at 6 o'clock on Sunday night. It's our grand opening. I guarantee you do not want to miss this. Uh, we've got 18 intelligent lights. We've got, we've got trust. We've got our dance group performing that night. It is going to be amazing. So if you see someone with these Oxygen t-shirts on, talk to them about it. They'll give you an invite. And I guarantee you, none of you guys or anyone around this area has seen what is going to happen that night or has experienced or heard about what is going to happen that night and you do not want to miss it. It's going to be a life-changing event. If you guys have lost friends that, uh, that you know, don't know Jesus or anything like that, bring them that night and I guarantee you they will get saved because the Spirit of God is just going to be in that place and it's just going to be a very, very, uh, an amazing time. So you don't want to miss it. 6 o'clock at Living Word Church in Vendelia, Sunday night. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so how many, I know a lot of you guys have had questions about Nova coming up there. I mean, I've got like 100 questions. How many of you joined the Facebook group said you're attending? Yeah. Matthew Webb has, that's right. Okay, so now we've got a few more people to tell you a little bit more, or rather act out a little bit more. Some more information you're going to need for that. Hey bro, did you hear about that Nova thing going on? Yeah, I did. I heard it's going to be totally late. I'd rather just like go to Lafayette or something. Uh, I'm with you on that. Oh like, yeah, that'd be totally Play awesome. some Call of Duty while I'm at it? Yeah, let's just, let's just do that. Alright, alright. Alright. Who's that over there? I don't know. Whoa. Oh, uh, hello. Yes, uh, my name is Rafiki, and uh, I was uh, walking through your school and looking at you, thinking, what are you wearing? You look horrible. Like, you look like poop. So I have clothes for you, and there you go, you change, and uh, me and my friends will tell these nice people what are we here about. All right, so we got Nova coming up. I believe it's March 10th, right? It's at 6. It's going to be awesome. Everyone needs to come, come out. Uh, yes, yeah, it is. 6.30. Be there at 6.30. Okay, so the plan is that everybody just needs to wear crazy outfits, like Johnny has his African stuff on, and people are just come in every different kind of possible outfit, neon stuff, just crazy stuff, dress clothes, just whatever you guys want to wear. Arrival starts at 6.30, and it's going to be awesome. There's going to be black lights and all kinds of crazy lights. It's just going to be great, so be here at 6.30. Nova actually starts at 7, but if you're late, that's just lame. So get here at 6.30 on time, ready to have an amazing time. So obviously they did not tell you the good part. Um, <coughs> afterwards, dance party. Girls like to dance. I like to do digging. Yes. Very good, very good. And we have lots of good, cool acts. We have, how you say, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. I don't know what they are, but they are good, funny good. Uh, we have people playing the piano, people singing. Who likes singing? I can yeah. Yeah. Um, we just have a lot of good stuff. So come out, enjoy your friend, bring your friend. Oh, look at these guys. Okay, okay, we give you one of them. It's a little too much, but okay, we won't say nothing. <laughs> yes, very good. Yes. So definitely come out to Nova and have a good time. Have a good night. Hopefully you guys got all the general information there. Nova, it's going to be the best night of all your lives. It's going to be amazing, so be there and wear whatever you want. It's really open for anything. Alright, so now down to the good stuff. Today at chapel, we've got downpour coming up tomorrow. And so, 12 hour day of prayer. That's going to be awesome. 10 a.m., 10 p.m. If you can be here at any amount of those times, it's open to everyone. Do it. Bring your friends, bring your family, bring whoever you can. It's going to be an awesome time to worship and pray to God. And today, to talk just a little bit more about worship is Max Conover. So if we can give him a warm welcome. How's it going, guys? 
Ah, uh, good. Long weekend coming up. Man, I am just gonna sleep in on Monday. It's gonna be awesome. We haven't, we haven't got very many snow days or anything, or even too hard to lay this week, or too hard to lay this week. But anyway, uh, yeah, like Zach was saying, we've got downpour coming up tomorrow. It's gonna be incredible. Um, honestly, you don't wanna miss it. It's, it's gonna be great. I, yeah, just come. Uh, 10 a.m., 10 p.m., it's gonna be here in the gym. Bring all your friends. It's gonna be great. <laughs> all right, anyway. Um, so today, we're gonna talk about worship. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about prayer a little bit, um, about who, what prayer is, who, is, who it is we talk, uh, who it is we pray to, what, what's, his, what's he like, what's his character like. Um, and so today, we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about worship and everything that goes along with that. Uh, so let's pray, and we'll get started. Lord, I thank you that you're here today, God. Um, that your Holy Spirit is here with us. God, I pray that, that we come to a better understanding about what worship really is, God. About, about what our hearts really are um, in regards to worship. God, reveal this to us, Lord. Um, I pray that, that you work in me, God, that, that I speak your words. Um, God, and that you do that. And that you bring us to a full understanding of what your, what your word has to say about worship. Lord, we thank you, we love you, God. We give Jesus all the praise for all of this. Amen. Alright, so once, once again, worship is a huge topic. You know, I can only hope to scratch the surface of you know, the, the topic of worship. Um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, you know, worship is a concept that we all here are pretty familiar with, you know? When, you know, when the curly-headed senior goes up and grabs his guitar, we know it's time to go up and worship, you know? It's, it's just kind of how it goes here. Um, you know, I bet you similarly have a routine at your church, you know? It's either the, the pastor says something, or the music starts, or the organist goes and sits at our bench, you know? Um, the, the, these, are the, these are the first things that pop into our mind when we think about worship. Is music, is praise, is, um, is opportunities like that within a within a service. Um, we did we did some interviews again this week. Um, it, it's kind of asking students about what 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 do they think worship is? What you know, what do you think worship is? What you know the meaningful worship experiences you've had? So stuff like that. So check it out. Thanks again to all you and to you guys who were a part of that. Um, yeah, thank you uh, for doing that. We have this common idea about worship, that worship is a song, that worship is, is a hand raised in chapel, um, that worship is a, is a choir singing. The, the, the same thing goes, goes for me. I, I, I've grown up in a church that sings hymns out of a hymnal. You know, it, you grab the book from the back of the pew, you open it to the page that, that it's listed in the bulletin that you were handed as you walked in. It, it, you know, some of you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, who, who, here, who here does hymnals? I, I, I worship every week. Cool. Um, so that's, that's been my experience. Um, I love hymns now, you know, I'm seriously so pro hymns, but for the majority of my life, I hated hymns. You know, I it just I got absolutely nothing out of out of the hymns. It was just you know it was super dry. Um, you know, I was cool with the Bible reading. I was cool with the sermon, but the hymns never did it for me. And then when I started coming to chapels here at junior high, it kind of became the same thing in a different way. You know, the worship, the, the music was different. The, I enjoyed the music more, um, but but it's still. It's still, I just, I just never knew what to do up there. Um, it, it became this identity-shaping event for me, you know. Keep in mind, I was, I was trying to be the guy, you know, who had it all together. This was the identity that I was, or the image that I was trying to fit. You know, the guy who has it all together, the, the spiritual guy. Um, you know, so I'd go up front, you know, and I'd, I'd be up there, and, you know, I'd, I'd survey the, the the audience of people up there, you know, the bass drum would start hitting louder, and I, you know, I'd look around and see how many people had their hands raised, and then determine whether or not I wanted to do so as well. You know, I just, this is just kind of how how it's always been for me. Um, you know, the, the matter, the fact of the matter was, I had clamped my mouth down on this lie that 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 was all that worship was. 
You know, worship was was on on Fridays. Worship was on Sundays. You know, I didn't really understand what, what this whole worship thing really was about. Because you see, as human beings, we're designed to make something the ultimate thing. You know, it, it doesn't matter. You know, it, it could be money, sex, power, um, you know, a, approval from your parents, a relationship, uh, it, it, success, grades. It, 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 something becomes the thing you're striving towards. Something becomes the thing that you, you, you sacrifice your time for, the, the thing that you find yourself um, the, doing more than anything else, the, the, you prioritize your life around this, this thing. Um, you know, worship is more than a song. You know, it implies devotion and honor and position in your life. To get a better understanding of this concept, we'll take a, a look at the life of Jacob from the Old Testament. Um, most of you are familiar with the story uh, of, of Jacob and you know Isaac is his father and Abraham is his father. It's back to the back to the Old Testament um, days. Oh yeah, and just so you're aware, um, we're going to be uh, reading from the Conover abridged version of the story of Jacob. <laughs> um, you know, it's probably not the most accurate translation of the of, of the Hebrew text, but but I'll, I'm going to try to put it in a way that's uh, hopefully easy to understand and to relate with. All right, so there's this guy named Jacob. Jacob, since he was a little kid, has, had always gotten the short end of the stick. You know, so it seemed. It, you know, Jacob was this, this wimpy, um, deceiving, conniving little shrimpy kid, right? Th this was this was Jacob. Um, Jacob has an, had an older twin brother uh, who was this big, hairy, burly guy. You know, he he had a beard coming out of the womb. This is this is this is Esau, right? He's huge. He's a hunter. He's he's a man. You know, when you think of when you think of you know the most manly men in the world, this is this is Esau, right? And so, you know, because he was the firstborn, and because he was a hunter, and because he was, you know, everything you could ever uh, think a man could ever be, um, uh, Jacob's father, uh, Jacob and Esau's father, Isaac, liked Esau more, uh, favored him above Jacob. Um, and, and, you know, and, and Jacob just kind of got the short end of the stick. He, he didn't get as much approval from his father. Uh, he didn't get enough, uh, as much, you know, favor from his father. And so, you know, naturally he became a mama's boy. You know, this is, this is Jacob, the shrimpy, deceiving, conniving little mama's boy, right? Okay, cool. That's Jacob. All right, so most of you know the story. Um, Jacob deceives uh, Esau. He, he, he tricks him out of, the, out of the birthright, out of his father's inheritance. Um, and, then, and then later on, uh, when, when Isaac is about to die and he's getting blind, um, Jacob goes in and uh, he puts on he puts on Esau's clothes. He puts on you know his, this hairy goat skin, so he feels. Not, just, real quick, just imagine that you know goat skin resembles Esau's hair. You know it's, that's ridiculous. That's so much hair. Anyway, um, but anyway, anyway, Jacob goes uh, goes into his father's Isaac and 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 makes Isaac think that he's Esau, uh, so that his father will bless him. But, but all of this, you know, all that Jacob wanted you know, was to feel some kind of belonging, was some kind of love from his father, some kind of blessing, even if it was a false one, even if it was one that, that wasn't true. Because, you know, you know, I mean, he, he probably realized that he, he wasn't actually going to get Esau's inheritance. He wasn't actually going to get um, his father's favor and his father's... Uh, his father probably wasn't going to like him more because because of his trickery. Um, but Jacob had put this relationship with his father, this, this approval from his father as the ultimate thing in his life, the thing he strived after the most. And so, you know, naturally, Esau gets pretty ticked about all this um, and so wants to kill him. Um, so Jacob has to run away um, to, to his relatives. His, it's, it's, he, he goes to his kind of Uncle Laban's house. It's, the families were weird back there, it, back then. It probably wasn't um, his actual uncle, but um, but yeah, this, this was Laban. Um, so, so so he makes this journey 
uh, to, this, to this city where, uh, where, where Laban lives. And uh, when he gets there, he, he goes to the well because he's thirsty after journeying for so long. Um, and, 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 he, and he's making small talk with the locals. He's, he's just you know, talk, you know, talking about the well and all sorts of stuff like that. When, you know, and, and no, no joke, I'm not making this part up. Um, he sees this, this woman, right? This drop dead gorgeous woman uh, named Rachel. He sees this woman and, 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 and realizes that Jacob right now is so broken. He's so, he has this hole deep inside of him. That, 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 has, that hasn't been filled up by his father. That, you know, he, he's lost his relationship with his mother. He's lost his relationship with his father and his family. He's all alone in the world. And so he sees this woman. He realizes that it's Laban's daughter, and, and which, is, which is who his parents wanted to marry, one of Laban's daughters. Um, and he sees this woman, and he runs over to her, kisses her, the first time they've ever met, kisses her and starts weeping with joy. You know, this is ridiculous. Imagine if this is you, right? Okay, this is you. Uh, you're Rachel. What are you thinking right now? But but Jacob runs over to her, and and th it just shows how how completely broken he was and longing for something. And, and when he thinks he finds it, he just grabs onto it. Um. So yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, he falls head over heels with this girl the instant he meets her. So Jacob, after, after a series of events, um, talks to Laban about marrying his daughter, Rachel. Um, no, no, just, you know, just, just so you can kind of get a bigger picture of this. Uh, Rachel also had an older sister named Leah. Um, Leah was probably unattractive. You know, it, it, the Bible kind of gives a reference that maybe she was even cross-eyed. You know, and, and, and just wasn't very pretty, wasn't attractive, wasn't, um, he, she, it wasn't desired like Rachel was. Um, so, so this is Leah. But anyways, where was I? All right, cool. Yeah, so anyways, Jacob asked Laban if he can marry his daughter Rachel. Um, he's infatuated her. And it's, and, and, you know, it's, this is made apparent because uh, Laban says, you know, um, what, you know, what do you, what, what will you do for her? You know, what, what, what kind of pay do you want? You know, what, what, what kind of arrangement can we, can we make? Before Laban even makes a suggestion, Jacob just blurts out, "I'll work seven years for, for her. I'll spend seven years in your service for this girl." It's ridiculous. Seven years, and, and no, it's, it's not even because that's what Laban wanted. That's not. Even, it's not because that's what. Um, it's, it's because that's the value that, that Rachel was in Jacob's mind. That's, that's like, I mean, for Americans, that's like two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars at least, you know? For, for this girl, for Rachel, seven years of his life devoted just to get Rachel. Why? Why did he do it? It was an offering. It was worship. It was a sacrifice. So at the end of the seven years, Jacob spent all this time um, working for Laban. And so at the end of the seven years, and this is, this is straight out of the Bible, Jacob says to Laban, give me my wife. My time is completed, and I want to lie with her. Essentially, Jacob said to his fiance's father, give me your daughter right now. I want to have sex with her right now. That's essentially what he said. <laughs> it's, that's, that's incredibly rash. That's crazy, you know? This is her father that he's talking to. But it just shows the condition of, of you know, it just shows the condition of Jacob's heart. You know, Jacob has put all of his stock in Rachel. You know, all of his happiness to the point that he's blinded. So they have a wedding feast, as, as was the tradition in that day. And, um, you know, Jacob has a few too many drinks. He gets inebriated a little bit. Uh, his, his reasoning isn't too great. Um, and, and Laban, Laban gives, gives Jacob his wife, uh, heavily veiled, you know, his face, their face was covered. Um, and as was, as was tradition, he went and he, and he, you know, and he slept with her. Um, but when he woke up in the morning, it was Leah, the older sister, 
the unattractive desire, unwanted sister. It was Leia. See, that's how these things go. Things like money and sex and power, grades, careers, relationships, friends. They can never satisfy. You'll always go to bed thinking it's Rachel, but you'll wake up in the morning next to Leia. Everything, all this is meaningless, you know? It's, everything will leave you aching on the inside. Nothing will ever satisfy this deep craving inside of you. Nothing can satisfy it. You'll always wake up next to Leia. It'll always be Leia, never Rachel. And then you'll, and then, you know, Jacob goes and he does seven more years. Pours, pours out these seven more years so he can have Rachel. It's, it, 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 he, he just keeps searching and searching. It's a cycle that we fall into. We think that, we, we, we look forward to something. We think it's going to be great. We think it's going to be awesome. We think that that's going to fulfill it. That's going to do it. That's going to make me happy. That's going to give me hope. And then we get there, and it doesn't. So we go farther. We go deeper into sin. Sin all, this, this, and not even sin. You know, love and, and friendships and money, these are, these are good things. Good things. But when they're made to the ultimate thing, that's, that's, that's when they start, you know, when you get into this cycle. <laughs> so then, we come to a point in Jacob's story where he finally begins to realize this. You know, he's in the deepest rut he's ever been in before. Um, he's, he's, in, he's, at the, he's at the lowest point of his life. Uh, Esau is, is coming after him. You know, he thinks, you know, he thinks that Esau's going to kill him. So, so he sends his family over this river. Um, so he's on the other side of the river with, with the rest of his family. He's alone. He's broken. He, he's, he's never found what's satisfied him. He's, he's hurting. You know, he's at, this, at the deepest pit of despair that he's ever been in. He's about to go to sleep. When this man comes up to him in the dark and just starts wrestling with him, that'd be kind of weird. You just you're just about to go to sleep and some guy starts and wrestles with you. You know, you don't even know who it is. But but this guy comes up and starts wrestling with him. Um, and so they wrestle all through the night. Okay, and and, and and when it comes about to daybreak, when when day is about there, the man overpowers him, and Jacob um, somehow. You know, we're not exactly sure how, but Jacob realizes you know, that, that he's been wrestling with God. Um, you know, there, 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 there's some debate as to what, what that actually means, you know, um, you know how, how that actually happened. But, but it's, it's, it's the whole concept that essentially Jacob was wrestling with God all night. And, and, and this man um, said, let me go because it's almost a daybreak. Um, and Jacob says, no, I won't let you go until you bless me. Essentially, Jacob was saying, no, I can't let you go. I won't do it. I've finally found something that can truly satisfy. I finally found the thing that can truly make me happy, that can truly fulfill all of my deepest cravings, all my desires, everything I've been looking for. And Jacob gets to this point, and, 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 he, and he's clinging to the thing that he knows will make him happy. He knows will give him the hope that he's, that he's, that he's been looking for all this time, and he, and he just holds on and says, no, no, I won't let you go until you bless me. You know, so Jacob had found it. You know, he'd been searching his whole life to fill this emptiness inside of him. He had searched after his father's favor, his mother's favor, love, sex, money, power, position, and nothing had satisfied him. You know, and the thing was, Jacob was a believer. It wasn't that Jacob was this, was, was this heathen. You know, he, he knew about God. He believed in God. His, his father had taught him about God. He'd even had encounters with God before. But nothing could satisfy his thirst. You know, he, he still fell into this, this, this cycle of brokenness and pain and hurt. Every time you think you're going to bed with Rachel, you wake up next to Leah. Every time. Nothing can satisfy but Jesus. You know, and, and, and some of you, I, I, I'm going to say a lot of you are in a position right now where you're hurting, where you're broken, you know, where, where you're empty, where you're like Jacob. You've, you've looked after it. You've looked for everything. You've sought after everything. 
and you keep going into this deeper cycle you know, of, of, of emptiness and brokenness and pain and hurt. Nothing can satisfy but Jesus. Because that's, a God, that's the way God made us from Eden. You know, he, all, all he ever wanted was, was full love, true love. You know, just, just a relationship with, with, with his creation, a relationship with love. That's, that's it. And he's designed us to yearn for something, to, to long for something. And that something is, is the one thing that can satisfy, and that's, that's him. Only he can satisfy the desires of your heart. Everyone here today is worshiping something. But there's only one thing that can be everything that you're looking for. Yes, it takes wrestling. Yes, it's, it's hard sometimes. It's hard to associate yourself with the name of Jesus and to be abandoned to Him and, and, and to live your life with Him in the center. But it's worth it. It's so, so worth it. He's what makes everything else matter. Yeah. Money, um, love, sex, I mean, they're all good things. But only after Jesus. Only after Jesus has become the ultimate thing. So, right now, we're going to move into worship. This is your opportunity. God's not disappointed or frustrated with you. God, he, he's not, you know, today you can meet with Him in a deeper way. You have an opportunity today. Today you can finally find what you've been looking for. It, it, it's, yeah, it's hard. It's a hard road. But it's worth it. It's worth it. Because Jesus satisfies. He satisfies the cravings of your heart. So I'm going to pray. And then I invite you to spend some time, either, either up here in front, or maybe at your seat, or maybe in the back, face down. I, I don't know. But just spend some time asking Him to fill your brokenness and committing to abandon yourself to Him. Because only He will satisfy. Only He will give you what you long for. So let's pray. Lord, I pray that Your Spirit would move. God, that you come, God, and that you would, you would show us your love. God, you'd show us what you, what you think of us, God. What you, how your desire is for us, Lord. I pray that you would come today. Lord, I pray that, that, that as we worship, God, that, that we would encounter you in a new way, in a deeper way, God. God, that we would learn something new about you, God. And that we, would, we wouldn't look back, God, but we'd run towards you. God, that, like the prodigal son who searched for everything. Who, 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 who spent all his money and searched for everything. God, and then realized that you're the only one who satisfies. And he came home, Lord. I pray that we would be, that we would come home. We'd come home to you, God, and that we'd, we'd find that one thing that, that can truly give us hope, Lord. I pray that, that you would be here, God. Lord, we love you, God. We love you, but we know that you're it. You're all we need.